Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for March 3rd. March 3rd is the 62nd day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, unless it's a leap year, and then it's the 63rd day of the year. There's 303 days remaining to the end of the year. For the next few days, I thought it would be interesting to look at toss pot words. Toss pots are words coined by combining a verb and a noun, like spitfire, shunpike, and scofflaw. Important to note that in these cases, the noun has to be the object of the verb. <laughs> so shut eye is a toss pot word, but shut in is not. <laughs> Today's word is catch all. A catch all is a bag or another receptacle for holding odds and ends. It can also be something that covers a wide variety of situations. Earliest documented use is 1838. Now let me take a moment to remind you that links to my research are included in the show notes. Ask you to go ahead and click that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Be sure and stay to the end for those outtakes and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Remember that you can share this video with others by email, message, or social media. And with that, we're going to start in the year 1845 when on March 3rd, Congress overrode a presidential veto for the first time. Florida was admitted as the 27th U.S. state on March 3rd, 1845. March 3rd, 1847 is the birthday of Alexander Graham Bell, inventor of the telephone. Meow <laughs> all. On March 3rd, 1849, the territory of Minnesota was created. March 3rd, 1863, Congress passed a conscription act that resulted in the first wartime draft of U.S. citizens in American history. The act called for registration of all males between the ages of 20 and 45. On March 3, 1865, the Freedmen's Bureau was created. President Abraham Lincoln signed a bill creating the Bureau of Refugees, Freedmen, and Abandoned Lands, and this was designed to oversee the difficult transition of African Americans from slavery to freedom. On March 3, 1875, the first indoor game of ice hockey <laughs> took place in Montreal, Quebec. Now, there is an idea that took off for sure. Seems that Prior to that, hockey was an outdoor game with grass, no ice at all. Ice hockey's a little bit different in that respect. On March 3rd, 1879, Congress established the United States Geological Survey, also known as USGS. There is a lot they do, but I'm particularly interested in the earthquake reports. And by the way, if you're as interested in earthquakes as I am, I'd like to let you know that there's an app for iPhone or iPad called QuakeFeed. QuakeFeed monitors earthquakes all over the world, and if you have it installed on your device, you can set it to notify you for various criteria. On March 3rd, 1887, a woman named Ann Sullivan began teaching a six-year-old, Helen Keller, who had lost her sight and hearing after a severe illness at the age of 19 months. Helen Keller was considered bright, but she was willful and unruly. Quite a handful. Anne had her work cut out for her, but she was patient and loving, and I guess they kept working together until the end of Anne's days. On March 3rd, 1891, the Shoshone National Forest was established as the first national forest in the U.S. and the world. This is the birthday of George Pullman, born March 3, 1831. He founded the Pullman Company, which manufactured the Pullman sleeping car, which is a type of train car. Quite the thing in their heyday. Eventually, demand for Pullman cars began to fade, though, and he made some business decisions that didn't turn out very well, including a worker strike, which is a long story in itself. George Pullman lived to the age of 66. March 3rd, 1911 is the birthday of American actress Jean Harlow. She was only in the biz making movies for nine years, but became one of the biggest movie stars in the world. Perhaps the original blonde bombshell. Unfortunately, she died at the age of 26 from complications due to kidney failure. 
On March 3, 1931, the Star Spangled Banner became our official anthem of the United States when President Herbert Hoover signed a Congressional Act making it so. Make it so, number one. Interesting. On March 3, 1952, the Supreme Court ruled in a 6-3 to three decision in favor of New York State law that would prohibit communists from teaching in public schools. They were deciding on a law called the Feinberg Law, which banned from the teaching profession anyone who called for the overthrow of the government. One might wonder if that law still stands. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Remember that links to my research are included in the show notes. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. Yeah, those are my guys. They're going to be making noise here in a minute. We had a, a brief interruption while the yard guys mowed. <laughs> so many mistakes. Say that again. I'm going to have to look that up right quick. We're not going to go into all that, okay? I don't know how all that's going to go together. Or if it's even going to make it to the video, we'll just see. That's not going to go probably cut all that out. That'll all be laying on the cutting room floor. <laughs> so I'll just do that whole thing over. That might not make it into the video. We'll see. Changing it up.